Hello everyone, this is Simply Syrup coming to you with another video today on one of our newest games, Clan Folk. Today we are going to be going over 10 game changing tips to help you secure a long and prosperous life for your clan. These tips are for general gameplay and I'm confident that after watching this video you will have a much better understanding of the game and will undoubtedly have a more efficient and productive playthrough. Before we get into this video, I just wanted to give a big thank you for trying out my channel. I also wanted to encourage you to consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. I've been working super hard lately to get out information and content and your support really goes a long way. As always, timestamps will be available in the video description, but before I take up any more of your time, let's get into the video. The first tip I wanted to share today is to keep your task list low. The task list is shown on the bottom right of the screen and gives the exact number of different jobs that are scheduled to be performed. This list fills up pretty fast and the more your clan advances, the more they will start to get bogged down performing daily chores, keeping your task lists high each morning and slowly winding them down towards the evening. The reason why it's so important to keep the task list low is because you want your workers to do the jobs you assign them as soon as possible. You really want to direct the efforts of your clan as a unit to accomplish goals quickly instead of spreading your family out among different jobs to perform. If your task list gets too high, your workers will become spread so thin that it will take days to accomplish even small tasks that can be finished in minutes with the full force. Additionally, if you have a high task list, you will notice that daily jobs that need to be done, like repairing animal beds or cooking food, will start to fall through the cracks. So especially for new players to the game, try and keep your task list low and keep the important jobs rolling. I would recommend keeping your task list below 100. But the better you get at the game, the more wiggle room you can have on this rule. The next two tips I wanted to share today go together and are for maximizing your clan's reputation. Clan reputation is super important and involves how many workers show up each day, how many guests come to stay at your inn, and how many traders with how much gold and the amount of resources that they are able to sell. Clan reputation is super important, and the first tip I wanted to share today to help you maximize this is to know when to send your workers home. Utilizing hired hands to get extra work done is great, but did you know that hiring workers is the fastest way to gain clan reputation? All you have to do is send workers home once they reach 100 clan rep. For whatever reason, hired workers are generally a lot happier than customers at your inn. After a day or two, normally their clan reputation is maxed out, so you can send them on their way for a big reputation bonus. Remember, the more workers you send away at maxed out reputations, the more workers will show up. You should constantly be revolving workers to maximize your clan's reputation. This tip didn't become clear to me until pretty late in my playthrough, but once I figured out how fast workers can gain rep, I really started acquiring those stars fast. Our next tip to maximize clan reputation, tip number three, is to always trade what you can. After year one, you should have acquired enough gold to do some honest trade with the neighbors. Every time a new trader shows up, you want to buy and sell everything you can spare to increase their clan reputation level. This will allow you to level up your reputation faster, giving each merchant more gold and more things to trade, thus allowing you to gain even more reputation from each interaction. Once you get a merchant's reputation high enough, you should be able to trade enough to reach a maximum of 100 clan reputation from each interaction. You should never trade away things that you may need to survive the winter, but it's okay to waste a little gold to help get your reputation up. Tip number four, always be preparing for winter. A cold winter is of course the number one reason most clans fail. Since this is the biggest obstacle to overcome, it stands to reason that you should always be preparing for it. We already made a video on this channel showing exactly how to survive the winter. And if you're having a tough time, I would encourage you to check it out because I'm confident that after watching that video, you will have no problem surviving even the coldest of winters. For this tip, just remember that making it through winter is the goal every year. And if you lose sight of that, then you should be prepared to lose some clan members once the lakes freeze over. This tip is here to simply serve as a reminder that winter is always coming and that you should always be preparing for it. Tip number five, mushrooms must be picked. 
The absolute biggest tip that anyone could give you for your clan folk playthrough is to pick mushrooms. Mushrooms are the greatest source of food currently in the game. They are plentiful, easy to acquire, and will last an incredibly long time when dried. You should start picking mushrooms as soon as they start to spawn during the summertime and take some relief away from the eel traps. Only advanced communities can survive without harvesting a large amount of mushrooms. So if you haven't made it to around day 100 yet, then picking mushrooms should be one of your top priorities. I cannot overemphasize this enough, picking mushrooms is the key to having a successful dynasty. For our sixth tip today, I wanted to remind you that there are two separate forms of heating. You need to have adequate heating for your home and clothing for your villagers. Both are necessary to survive the winter and keep your clansmen happy. The best way to heat your home is through stone fireplaces, while the best way to clothe your family is to acquire fur clothing from killing lots of wild animals. There are, of course, more and a few better options for heating, like wool clothing, but just starting out, stone fireplaces and fur clothing is the way to go. I would rate heating as the second highest priority in the game, just slightly behind gathering food. Having adequate heating is super important and this tip should go a long way to giving you a prolonged playthrough. Tip number seven, strip mine for ore. This tip is for locating more iron deposits. Iron is probably one of the most important resources that can be acquired in clan folk. However, it's not always the easiest to find. I picked up this little tip that seems obvious now, but I wish I had thought of it sooner. Instead of tearing down whole mountains in search of ore, just dig out strips and look for deposits going along these rows. Normally, iron deposits are pretty large, so you don't have to worry about missing anything as long as you don't make the strips too far apart. Moving on to tip number eight, let villagers do what they enjoy. This tip is for keeping your villagers mood up and maximizing how much they can get done in a day. For those of us that skip the tutorial, each character has specific jobs that they enjoy doing. They're also granted a skill multiplier in this specific category of work. To see what I mean, simply click over to the skill tree tab and take a look around. You should leave medical as a top priority to ensure that they are still taking care of themselves, but then the rest is up to you. Make sure to put their favorite task higher up on the priority list to maximize their productivity levels. Tip number nine, use your auto supply. This tip is pretty basic, but honestly crucial to success in clan folk. Use your auto supply. The auto supply is the cog icon that appears over each production. You can set a predetermined amount of whatever resource you want and your clan members will get to work producing that item until the goal is met. There is not a single craftable in clan folk that I do not use the auto supply on. The real trick is finding the exact amount of each resource you want to produce. For tools and clothes, I make sure that I have enough for each clan member, but when it comes to other resources, you will have to find what works best for your community. Whatever you decide, try and use your auto supply on as many of your productions as possible to save precious time. The final tip I wanted to share today may be the most important, and it's to always remember to replenish. Resources in clan folk are finite, and if you're planning on having a prolonged playthrough, then you should expect to harvest most everything on the map someday. I know it may be hard to imagine, but you will run out of things like trees and grasses pretty quick. Due to this, in your later years, you should start trying to replenish the resources you are taking up and become more sustainable. This would involve planting trees, farming your own grasses, replanting reeds, and moving eel traps and fishing spots to different lakes every once in a while. I hope you can survive long enough for this to be an issue, but I'm confident that if you're watching the guides on this channel, you will have a much better shot at it. And there you have it, 10 tips in clan folk to help improve your playthrough. Thank you so much to those of you who have made it this far in the video. I really hope you will find my tips helpful and will utilize them in your own playthrough. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed the information and consider subscribing to the channel so we can grow together. I will be coming out with more clan folk videos soon with more great information that you won't want to miss. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop a comment below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Also, take a look in the video description for a link to my Twitch channel where we are playing the newest and best games, just like clan folk, almost daily. Thank you so much again for giving my channel a try. I hope to see you again soon.
Until next time, this is Simply Syrup signing off.